today I'm going to talk about uh, acquiring knowledge. Okay. Uh, now the Bible said in Proverbs 18, uh, the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge, for the ears of the wise seek it. So one of the things I'm praying for all of you is that you find the joy of learning as students right here. I believe God put us here. It's not just to get a degree, right? The degree will get obsolete very soon. It's not also to pursue a certain interest. Now, you, you know interests change, and the world is changing. Um, God wants us to come right here, acquire certain knowledge, so that we internalize something into us, that we can use it for our whole lives. Now, I always say to students, your greatest potential is that you are young. You know, you're young. And being young, your mindset is not formed yet. There's a lot of things you can learn and relearn. But it has its downside also. You know why? Because you are young, the mindset is not formed, you can be easily influenced by what the world says, by what your peers believe in. So the thing about acquiring knowledge, so now I'm praying for you right here. Uh, this is three years of study and three or some of you four years, that you acquire knowledge right here. Not just the book knowledge. Now you learn it in your course. I want you to learn everything. Learn everything. The opinions of people, uh, the attitudes of men, the way things are run, uh, the, the way the world operates, even classes like that. You know, we need this kind of Bible study session. And, and so that, you know, we... We are getting something into us, you know, and on and off, we are learning things, learning things, accumulating knowledge. So other than getting the knowledge into your head, the next thing you need to do is you have to discern it. You get what I mean? Now, knowledge will not be useful if it doesn't become your discernment. You're not just given knowledge to be knowledgeable. You know, some people are knowledgeable, but you need to have wise discernment in everything that you are doing. Like for instance, the choice you made, you know, the way you see things, the way you read people. You no, know, these are discernment. Now you can be very knowledgeable, like a scientist, <laughs> you know. But the thing is, um, can you apply the knowledge? Every knowledge will not be useful if it's not being applied, you know, and. Uh, I have seen PhDs, you know, they are so intellectual, you know, but they cannot handle marital problems. They cannot handle their children. I have seen very smart people, they cannot take criticism. They are easily affected and distracted by what people say, you know. And, you know, I, I know someone, you know, uh, who has a master degree, you know, uh, very successful in career, you know. But when the parents ask him, you know, go to the supermarket and buy something, and you know, he gets very stressed up. You know, these are the things, you know, what I'm talking about. Knowledge is everything. It's not just that book knowledge that we have. And the Bible talks about these things, okay? So, um, I want you to enjoy learning here. Everything that you are learning here, okay, be before you enter this society. So, can we, can we turn to a part in the scripture? Philippians. Now, turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. Uh, Philippians chapter 1. Verse 9 and 11 over here, you will see the prayer that Paul is praying for the believers in Philippi. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge. Now, the love in your heart comes from somewhere. It comes from the knowledge and depth of insight. Apparently from the word of God, right? So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Now you notice that, what, is I, what did I just say? You need knowledge, right? So you have the word knowledge there. And with that knowledge, learn to discern. Learn to read things, make good decisions. And with the knowledge, learn to listen to what others are saying, know what to believe in, what to focus on, right? 
and so that you'll be filled with the fruit of the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Now, are you with me? Are you using the NIV? I'm using the very old version of NIV. Okay. All right. So, a very quick one. There is three kinds of knowledge that I like all of us to have. Okay. And I believe God wants us to be equipped with. Number one, it's the spiritual knowledge. Now, apparently, what is being said here is the spiritual knowledge. Now, all knowledge, wherever, okay, your scientific knowledge, you know, your society knowledge, your political knowledge, it all comes from spiritual knowledge. And what is spiritual knowledge? It is the knowledge of God and His truth. The knowledge of God and His truth. Now, people think that knowing God is just reading the Bible. Now, that's not spiritual knowledge. Let me tell you what spiritual knowledge is. It's knowing how real the Bible is in your daily lives, such as you can live right before Him with a clear conscience. Now, what did I just say? It's not just reading the Bible every, every day. It's about knowing how real the Bible is in your daily lives, so that you can live right before Him with a clear conscience. Now, think about this. What is a clear conscience? A clear conscience is what you know in your heart. What are you going to do or what you are not going to do because God says so. Now, you think about it. Right? We are all students. I was a student. <laughs> but you think about it. When we are in primary school, now my kids are in primary school. I look at them. Sometimes I ask them, why do you want to, why do you study? Because you want us to study. <laughs> now, ever since young, no, we study with this mentality because my parents want me to study. And then when you come to the uni, what do you study now? Now I study for my future. But I ask you, where, where is God in the picture? Where is God in the picture? Now, living before Him with a right conscience, knowing that I'm doing something or not doing something because he says so because of Him. Now, we are brought up in our lives to do things by our preference or by some mainstream expectation. People expect that of us. But a lot, a lot of times we're not doing things because just because the Word says so. Don't you think so? And you know, I've seen students, you know, when I was in uni, I've seen students right here, very smart student, and then they start playing with shares. <laughs> Have you had friends like that over here? You no, know, they play with shares, you know, they start to make money. And then they start to make some money. I, they thought, this is what I want to be. And then they lose big time. And then they quit school and all. So this is the case where people are just going by what works. What is success? What is my preference? What I think is good? But where is the spiritual knowledge? Where is the word of God? You see, when, when you grow up to a certain age, you are responsible to no one anymore. You're not responsible to your parents anymore because I make my own decisions. And, all. and then I ask you, where do you get your sense of right and wrong? Where do you get your sense of right and wrong? When you talk about spiritual knowledge, when God gives you the truth, you live before Him, right? Oh, and with a right conscience, God, I'm doing something. I'm not doing something because I have your word in my conscience. I know what I'm going to do. And what I'm not gonna do. And with now is, you know, people just live as they like as long as there is no repercussion. You know? There are people who like to job hop, you know, when I, I'm working, you know, people like to job hop one job to another. And there are a lot of opportunists when you are in the society, right? People just looking for opportunity, you know, someone offer me better things and I'll jump the boat, you know. Well, that's about survival. But I think as a Christian, as a Christian, now, we are always conscien conscious. Now, what is God saying in my life? So I want this knowledge to stay yeah, right in text. So spend time to read the Bible, apply it, confirm it. Okay, that's the very first knowledge you need to have. Okay, so this is the most important. That's why I spent a lot of time talking about it. The next one. Now, book knowledge. Now, whatever it is, you call it, okay. This world is filled with books. Now, this is the reason why God puts you here to accumulate knowledge. 
Well, I always believe that no matter what we study, engineering, you know, psychology, management, estate, whichever, you know, it doesn't matter. But most important is how we are taught to process our thinking. So wherever you are learning, now as a student right here, you, you find joy in learning something new. Okay? I want you to, I did politics here, you know, political science and psychology, you know. Some of you do engineering and all. Now, I, I want you to, to understand that it doesn't matter what you're studying, but let your curiosity be nurtured by what you are studying and learn to process your thinking. When you are given certain knowledge, you know, um, no, try to ask questions. You know, when I was in Israel, you know, I was asking a lot of questions to a Russian pastor. I say, wow, why do you come here, you know, all the way here? And, and what do you see about Israel? You know? And that pastor said, you know, who are you? Are you a reporter? <laughs> you know? But I'm, I'm just curious, you know, even today, I'm, I'm learning something new constantly. I'm hoping you, you can be in psychology, you know, and if you want to know how engineer, engineering stuff will ask him. You know, ask around. Now, it's something in us. We, we are given this infinite world, universe, to learn about everything. And the more you learn, the more you know how great that God is who created everything. There's no end to knowledge. Okay? So, after you've got the spiritual knowledge right, the knowledge about God and His truth, next thing is, you know God put you here in uni, now, this top-notch academic institution here to acquire knowledge, book knowledge. And then what is the third no kind of knowledge? Interpersonal knowledge. No. Interpersonal. It's all about people. Believe that there is always something to learn with people around you. Even if it's opinions. People like to give opinions. You know, when I was doing politics, you know, um, my, my professor was saying, you know, coffee shop talkers, you know, they gossip, you know, they, they talk about things that are not so true, they are half-truths. Now, along the way in my life, I have learned that whatever people say, sometimes even if it's just their opinions or their feelings, you know, even if it's half-truth, take it as a reference. Don't refute everything. Take it as a reference, you know. For instance, I, I'm a pastor. If someone comes to me and says, you know, Pastor, I don't feel at home in church. You know. Probably the problem is with him, you know, not with the church. But if you feel this way, you know, I would take it as a reference. I want to think through. Why are you feeling that way? You get what I mean? Now, this is the, the way you, you remain open-minded and, and you read into things, you read into people. Now, and... And I, I said something here, you know, um, when you are with people, you know, don't be too anxious to give your opinions. I mean, sometimes, you know, when, when we are in uni, you know, my experience, I, when I'm in tutorial, everyone wants to say something. Everyone wants to contribute, you know. And then you are very uptight about, oh, yeah, I'm not contributing. Some people feel, I don't like to be with groups, you know, because everyone is saying something, I have nothing to say. I mean, it's okay. Just listen. You know, acquiring knowledge is just about listening. You must listen enough to be able to contribute meaningfully. Don't you think so? But sometimes when you're too uptight about contributing, then you're not listening. You're not acquiring knowledge. You get what I'm trying to say? So, and don't only learn from your peers. Some people say, no, I want to learn from people who are more educated, you know, who can think more critically. Sometimes you can learn from your grandmother. You ask your grandmother what happened during World War II. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. You can learn about things, knowledge from people from all walks of life, you know. And this is the thing. Okay, I want you to know about three kinds. Three kinds of knowledge. Okay? And uh, that basically, and God has intended that for us. Okay, but now, Knowledge seems to be in the head. But what is the focus now? Now, the, the thing is, everything you get into your head, you let it remain there. Have you ever asked the question, and how are you going to use it? Now, some people, as I've said, they can know a lot of things. But they're easily stressed about life. They don't know how to make decisions. 
and they are confused and flustered when problems happen in, in their lives. So there's no focus in them. Now, what you learn in your head must come into your heart. You get you know what I mean? What you learn into your head must get into your heart. Getting knowledge is not just to prove that you are not above others. It makes no sense for a Christian. If you ask me to read a verse, I'll just read a verse, or God wants me to interact with people. No, the intended purpose God wants me to do that is to get that knowledge into my heart, internalized it. Okay? So, understand what I'm saying here. Only knowledge that goes into your heart is useful. You get what I'm trying to say? So, let me ask you. After you learn everything here, now, as a Christian, you know, God gives us the Bible, which is, which is the absolute truth. God gives us the universe to learn about everything. You know, you have all kinds of causes, subjects, you know, over here. Modules, you know. And God gives you people to be around you, uh, to talk to you, to give you opinions, you know. But at the end of it, if you are a man of prayer, if you are always walking before God, God, I know with all these things that I've learned and relearned, now, there must be something getting into my heart. That knowledge must get into my heart. And when I say heart, what do you think should get into your heart with all this knowledge? What should get into your heart? When I talk about heart, it's no longer the head, right? It's, it's no longer just memorizing scripture. After you have read the word of God, after you have spoken to people, what comes out from your heart? What must develop in your heart? Yes, love. Did you say love? Yeah, love. It's love. Now, that's why the, the scripture says here, love abounds more and more. Am I right? At the end of every learning, you have to ask yourself whether you have the capacity to love. Someone could be someone who is familiar to you or someone who you are so familiar about his or her weakness. It could be your your family members, sometimes your parents, sometimes parents piss you off, you know, or sometimes it could be a brethren. No, it's about loving them. To love is the end product of Christianity. It's love that heals a person. It's love that stirs a person's heart and moves a person forward and so that the person doesn't stay in his struggles and failures. Now, do you all have uh, struggles and failures in your life? You have? Yes, we all have, right? But the thing is, when you are equipped with love, when you are given the capacity to love, you will not just stay in your failures and pain anymore. You will want to use your failures and pain for the benefit of others. And don't you think so? Now, I tell you, a depressed person, nowadays we have a lot of depressed people. A depressed person can never love. And the reason why he is depressed is there's no love in his heart. And that's why he's always absorbed in, oh, what I didn't do well, you know, what I failed in, you know, what others do, what I didn't do well. No, that kind of thing. He's always absorbed in himself, right? We all have our bad experience. We all have our failures. But the thing is, when, when you're equipped with the knowledge of God, then you have prayed through that knowledge till that knowledge becomes love in your heart. And that's when you find you'll be set free. You'll be set free. All right. So what you get in your head is not going to help you. Okay, is what you ultimately gets into your heart. And then what is the next thing after love? I'm talking about a heart now. What is that next thing after love? Peace, of course. Of course, faith. These are things of the heart. Okay, but I want to emphasize another thing. Okay, love. Okay, love. You know. Okay, love encompasses all. Right. Um, but. When, when a person loves, because the scripture says, so that you can discern what is right and wrong. Am I right? You, you saw that? So what is this right and wrong about? It's morality. Now, some people say, no, morality is not so important. We are saved by grace. No. Now, our God is a righteous God. He has his sense of right and wrong. Am I right to say that? The reason he's given us the truth 
That's because there is falsehood. When there's falsehood, you need to expose falsehood with the truth. So morality, what I'm saying here, now you get this right. When the world talks about morality, it's a totally different thing from us Christian. Now the world will say, as long you don't break the law, as long you don't harm someone else, that's morality. That's why the, the world doesn't care, you know, whether if you want to be a heterosexual or homosexual, it's just love. You know, you're not hurting anyone. That's it. You know, you are free to do so. Now, that's the standard of the world. Now, you can play with shares you know, as long as you don't neglect your studies, as long as you don't start borrowing from people. Now, if you make it, you are successful. Now, that's the standard. That's the morality of the world. But to us Christian, morality is always based on the principle of the Bible. There is always the principle of the Bible. Am I right? So you know, uh, after you know, know the Bible, you start thinking through, um, why am I pursuing a degree? Uh, what is pursuing a relationship? You know, now, these are the things we think through, you know. But for the non-believer, they don't have to think through these things. You know, like, for instance, do you have friends who say, no, uh, we, uh, we, we want to go keep on upgrading ourselves. We want to get a double degree so that our resume looks good. You know, you have friends like that? Yeah. To, to them, it's the right thing to do. But for me, I mean, <laughs> for you, but for me as a Christian, when I was studying here, you know, People are talking about wow, first class honors, you know, second upper, at least I must get, you know, so that my resume will look good. Now I sense something is wrong about this. It's it's the intention that is wrong. You see, when I'm given the, the salvation, the grace and the glory of God and the purpose of God, you mean I come to this world or I coming to this uni as a student is to pursue a better resume? I don't think so. So when when I have my morality, my sense of right and wrong, based on the principle of the Bible, I realize it's not by the standard of the world anymore. You get what I mean? I, I must know what I'm doing something, whether it benefits the kingdom, whether it benefits people around me, and whether I have a right and clear conscience before God when I think about my motives. You know what I mean? Now, that's the thing about morality. And then a lot of people are not getting this right, even Christian. And you see, after love, yes, God is love, but He gave us the truth so that we live by His standards of morality. Okay? And then, number three, okay, the last thing I want us to be, <coughs> to let, to get it into our heart is, as what the scripture says, discernment. Now, once you have love and morality, you realize the next thing is, you receive discernment in your heart. And that person is a wise person. He will not follow the crowd. He will not live by the standards of the world. Now, the world is getting more dangerous. It tells you a lot of things, a lot of information. But because of all this knowing, people are losing self-control in their lives. Do you know that? No. I just read an article uh, before I came, you know, about people nowadays, uh, they are dieting a lot, uh, going on diet. You know why? Because they're more overweight people. Why are they more overweight people? Because everything is just a click of a button. It's just an app. You can get your KFC, pizza, grab food, whichever. So these are the these are the things. Now people are losing control. People are using their handphones without control. People are believing in information, being shaped, conditioned by them without control. You get what I'm trying to say? Now, the discernment of the heart. When God gives you the biblical knowledge, the book knowledge, and the interpersonal knowledge, so that you, you see how people live, and you learn from their failures or their success, something must get into you. God, I know, first of all, you want to give me love in my heart, and then the morality by which I live, by your standards, so that I know I'm clear conscience before you, and third, so that I can discern well, make good decision in my life, and all. And so, say for instance, if all your classmates, last time I always have this temptation, you know, everyone's skipping lecture, and should I? <laughs> now, sometimes, you know, when people are skipping lectures, you know, you feel, 
maybe I should not go. So because people say there's nothing to learn in this lecture, you know. But a few times, you know, I went against it. And I went, you know, and I learned something. Or I meet someone, you know, that is helpful for me. And anyway, when you go out to work, you will face the, the same problem. You know, people are telling you, I, uh, let's quit, you know, this job, no prospect. And then when, when people start saying this, your colleagues start saying, maybe I should quit or so, I should look for a new job. You see, you're just following the crowd. There's, there's no self-control because of the, all the information coming. You don't know how to discern. We're just following the crowd. Now, the, the world is becoming like that. When the world becomes one, you know, with the social media, when, when everyone is learning from everyone, everyone is influencing everyone, now you, you realize somehow your mind and heart is being controlled easily. Unless you have the knowledge in you, and then you know how to translate it into your heart through, through what? Through prayer. You know, in prayer. Prayer is about getting what you know, okay, in your head, into your heart. So every time we pray, you realize that we struggle through. Now, you don't read your Bible and pray ritually and then you go to school. It's pointless doing that, am I right? After you read the Word, you, you mm. know there is something in the Word that instructs you, but you, you're not good. You aren't able to do it yet. You aren't able to live it yet. So you need to pray and struggle through, talk to God, and in the midst of it, God will change your heart. Oh. And put in your heart love, morality, morality and discernment. So, last thing. So what are some of the obstacles? Now, very quick one, okay? Just one more minute. What are some of the obstacles do you think that is preventing you from acquiring true knowledge. What what are some of the obstacles? I'm I'm just going to quickly give you three things, okay? Three things. Now you, you can come up with more. Uh, later you you can share if you have. I I realize the first one is narrow mindedness. Narrow mindedness meaning you confine yourself to what you already know, okay? You confine yourself to what you already know. Now, these people usually, they're very narrow-minded. They're contented with what they know. They have certain predetermined thinking or mindset about people and things. Now, don't do that, okay? You are young, as I've said. You have a lot of potential. What I say is you get your fundamentals right, but have a healthy level of curiosity. You get what I mean? Fundamentals meaning the truth that doesn't change. God has given us the truth, right? Get it right, but have a healthy level of curiosity. Learn and relearn, all right? Second, I think what works again us about learning and relearning is being influenced by people, especially seeing how others are better than us. Mm. No. Do you have that problem? No. Especially when you see how others are progressing and then you feel small, you feel you're not advancing. Now, these are distractions to learning. Do you not notice that? Everyone has different learning capacity. But when we are always affected by how people are progressing, now, your, your heart will be affected. Your, your heart will, will be constrained to learn. Now, I, I, let me give you an assurance. After you graduate, okay? After you graduate, all of you are going to be in, on equal grounds. Whether you are second upper or second lower or third class, <laughs> whichever. Everyone goes to the society, they relearn everything. Okay, believe me. Okay, they relearn everything. So, don't let feeling small become an obstacle, all right? And the third thing I want to get into all of you is, um, there are some people, they became proud, conceited about their achievements. You notice that? No. There are people who, who, who think they know a lot. They're starting to trust in their senses. 
And uh, let me say this. What did the Bible say is about knowledge in Proverbs? You know Proverbs is all about knowledge, right? The very first verse you have to memorize in Proverbs is the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of all knowledge. The fear of the Lord. Fear as if you recognize this God and you treat Him with reverence. And I know a Christian brother, you know, <clears throat> ever since, I mean, when I was in my teenage years, he was my leader. And when, I, when I was in the youth fellowship, now he was such a confident, charismatic person. So sure about himself. He did well, you know, whenever he's with people, he's well liked. And um, he got a good degree, married a beautiful wife, and got a good job. And to a point, I, I think in his life, he, he thinks that he doesn't need God and he can do equally well. And he married a non-Christian. He, he didn't even think twice about, you know, what is going to be, you know. Anyway, we get along and that's it. And he just do what he likes. He, he just believe in his senses. And what happened is, you know, after that, uh, they had a child. And the child grew up and they realized he's autistic. And our worlds fall apart. He doesn't know what to do. And then he starts hiding himself from his peers, you know, because he has appeared good to everyone all his life until something strikes him. Now, learn the way of humility from such cases. What I say, uh, we, we are people with a master in our life. We cannot live our own lives. No matter how good, how successful we are, you know that's because there is a God who gives grace to us, who makes all things possible for us. That's why we are where we are, you know. Even coming right here into uni, you know, uh, some people say this is the best uni in Singapore. You know? It's by the grace of God. And even if you are gra- going to graduate with a good degree, never trust your own senses. Somehow along the way, you know if you trust yourself and you get conceited, you will be blinded about certain things. Uh, right? You will have blind spot in your life. Right? So, may God bless you. You know, this is a message you know, for all of you acquiring, me- acquiring knowledge that will really set you apart as Christian in this world.